Okay, so today we're going to take the next step in programming our Node MCU Cube multi sensor and we're going to load the Arduino code onto it. We're going to configure the code with the proper Wi Fi settings, mosquito server settings, and options like display type, display location, sensors to use, and whether to connect to remote server or to just be a local display of temperature and humidity. So first, open your browser and go to this GitHub page. This is the NodeMCU Home Automation Sensor Source Repository. The only file you actually need is this NodeMCU Home Automation Sensor.ino file, but the easiest thing to do is just download the whole zip file. Download the zip, open it up, and I have my Arduino file. Double click on the Arduino file, and click OK to create the folder. So now Arduino opened up, so the next thing we need to do is plug in our sensor. Plug in your USB cable to the sensor. And we're going to need to make sure that we have the right port selected. Now let see you 0.9 in my case. Next, make sure you have the right COM port selected. Now in this file, and in this file there's a couple settings that we need to configure before loading the code. The first setting is whether we want to have this multi-sensor report to our home automation server or if you just want it to be a local temperature display. If you don't want it to be a local display and you do want to report to the home automation system, keep this uncommented. The next setting is the display type. In our case, we're using an I2C display, so we're gonna keep this commented out. The next setting is pretty obvious. It's whether you want Celsius or Fahrenheit degree display. The deep sleep setting is what's used to make the sensor go into deep sleep mode between the reports. This is good if you're operating the sensor from battery, but this is important. If you're using the sensor as a motion or if you want to be able to update the code over the air, you have to keep this option coming out. Obviously for motion sensors, you want the sensor constantly active and looking for motion events. The next setting is pretty self-explanatory as well. If you mount the sensor with the USB plug pointed out, uncomment flip screen. Next, we have the motion detection option. So if you have a motion sensor hooked up to the external connector, uncomment this option. The next few settings are reserved for future upgrades. So for now, keep these options commented out. And finally, you have the over the air update option. I keep this uncommented out because I want to be able to load new code onto the sensors when they're connected around the house. Okay, so this is the configuration of the, of the sensor right here. Next, we need to configure the Wi-Fi and Mosquito server settings. So in Wi-Fi SSID, just type in the name of your home Wi-Fi network. And here you'll obviously want to put in your Wi-Fi password. The third option is the IP or host name of your Mosquito server. For me, this is the host name of my Raspberry Pi that runs OpenHab. Mosquito device is how you want to identify your sensor on the network and to the Mosquito server. So for example, if this was a kitchen sensor, I would type in kitchen here. You can provide the user and password for your Mosquito server if it requires it. And you can also change the OTA password if you want to secure your over-the-air uploads, something other than 123. Now the next section is your Mosquito topics. This is a set of topics to which this, this sensor will post its current information to. So you want to replace the Mosquito device default setting here with your Mosquito device name. So I'll take my kitchen, copy it, and replace it within every Mosquito topic. These are the topics you'll subscribe to in your home automation system in order to get data from this sensor. These next two settings we'll talk about more in the next part of the series, but essentially these are offsets that you can provide to the sensor to calibrate it better. When I commission these sensors to use them in my home automation system, I will run them in the same room where my thermostat is located for a couple days and then their readings to the thermostat. The difference is linear across the range we're looking at, so I'm able to put in a simple offset for both temperature and humidity readings. The main reasons for having these offsets is that one, the DHT22 sensors just come uncalibrated to me, and two, there is an offset due to the sensor being placed in an enclosure with, with the node MCU, which generates its own heat. But for the purposes of, of our logging and using these readings to calibrate our heating or air conditioning system, the readings this sensor provides are good enough, especially when calibrated to your thermostat. I will just make a quick note here. I do intend to work on these settings being a little easier to configure on the fly, 
And if you're willing to help, I have created some issues in the GitHub repository you can help work on. Okay, now that we have these settings completed, we will simply go to upload them to our sensor. And after the sensor loading completes, the sensor will restart, attempt to connect to your Wi-Fi network, and then start displaying the local temperature and humidity. At this point, we're done working on the sensor itself, and we can start working on connecting this to our home automation system. And that will be part of the video in this series. So if you like this video, please hit the like button below. Or if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and write them in the comment section below the video as well. And if you want to see more videos like this one, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and until next time.